you put the key in, turn it on, and it's a twist throttle, twist the throttle, and you're off. This is a Emax electric scooter. Uh, this is a German scooter, it came out about two months ago. This is essentially the electric equivalent of a Vespa, 50cc scooter. It has a top speed of 37 miles an hour, and it has a range of about 40 miles. Plug it in overnight, uh, takes about three and a half hours to recharge, costs about 10 cents uh, per charge to recharge the batteries. Now, if Geyser seems like an electric moped salesman, well, you're not that far off. But it didn't start out that way. He actually is a pretty successful architect. He's designed over 100 Starbucks and specializes in upscale homes. Um, a beam, a, uh, a couple of 2x10s will carry the structure. My personal epiphany came um, one day when I was sitting in traffic, um, taking about 25 minutes to get three miles from my home to my office. And um, I saw someone on an electric scooter go by. It made sense to me. I thought, well, maybe I can get to work faster if I ride one of those. And that is how Geyser became the Pied Piper of two-wheeled electric vehicles. At first, finding electric bikes that did just about everything, including folding up and going on the metro, was just a personal hobby. But when there were no other distributors in the area, he decided to sell them. Slowly but surely, the electric bikes became a bigger piece um, of this business. As the products increased, we got more and more bikes and more and more scooters. It became apparent that we were kind of outgrowing our lobby here, so we decided to take our conference room and turn it into an uh, electric bike showroom. The other thing that we do, uh, if you have a bicycle and you want to motorize it, we'll put a motor on it for you. Typically what we'll do is we'll take, the, uh, take your wheel, put a hub motor in it, sell your battery kit, hook up a throttle, and so we can just about electrify any bike that you have. One of the challenges with having an electric vehicle is that sometimes you're near the end of your charge and you need to find a place to recharge. So as I walk through buildings, as I walk around town, I'm always looking for electric plugs. So like we have a electric plug that I Looking to plug in wherever you can find a spare outlet sounds a bit ad hoc. It hasn't won him any visible enemies. Dave Dabney is executive director of the Bethesda Urban Partnership, the equivalent of this Maryland's town's mayor. Well, you know, what Paul's offering is not for everybody, but for those people who are tired of the congestion on the road, tired of trying to find a parking space, and are looking for an alternative, that's one of the things that Paul offers. And from, his, and from the way of saving gas, saving fuel, being good for the uh, environment, there's nothing better than an electric vehicle to be able to accomplish that. Now the idea of electric vehicles isn't new. In 2000, GM started rolling off the assembly line a limited number of full-blown electric cars called the EV1. Three years ago, GM canceled that program because they say the cars were too expensive and not popular enough. The ensuing repossessions riled activists and some Hollywood stars who drove the cars, including Mel Gibson. Believe it or not, that sucker goes. That really? thing will take you so fast you can get a ticket. A wow. documentary film that looks at the controversy called Who Killed the Electric Car is being released nationwide by Sony Classic Pictures in July. But are Paul Geyser's electric bikes just a pipe dream, destined for failure like GM's EV? Dave Dabney doesn't think so. One of the reasons that a program like this could take off is because it overcomes a lot of people's objections. Over the years, people were concerned about the fact that electric vehicles were too costly, there wasn't a place to charge them, uh, the, 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 distant, or the, the time that you had on the vehicle while, after it was charged was not sufficient. I think what Paul's offering, as this technology continues to evolve, and I've seen some of the things that Paul's had over the last uh, three or four years, and each year it gets better and better. Uh, the, the charge lasts for longer. The speed that you can attain during, after the charge is equivalent to being able to stay on a roadway at 30 miles an hour. Um, I think a lot of these objections are, are being overcome, and they are viable alternatives to people when they're considering alternatives to that single occupancy vehicle. For his part, Paul Geyser says the future of two-wheeled electric vehicles looks bright. He's just sold his hundredth one and turned a profit for the first time. For Discovery News, I'm Joe Rubin.